Hello watch lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dion and today we have a beautiful Vacheron Constantin on the bench. But, and there is a but, it has been, uh, let's say, worked on in a strange way. So we'll see a little bit about that. But it is a beautiful 1940s uh, watch, a simple dress watch in uh, 18k gold. It is running, but not uh, particularly well. The interesting thing is that uh, John, the owner of the watch, said that the watch uh, had last been worked on by Vacheron Constantin themselves. He was, however, not entirely sure, and uh, I would think it's actually not the case, because there are some things that have been done to this watch that uh, is not pleasant to see. Let's uh, get the hands off first, these beautiful gold and uh, blued hands. And to get to the movement itself, we also have to take off this uh, spacer ring. And there is some debris there already. Looks like some small brass shavings. Yeah, there's no need for that quite yet. We will get to that, sadly. With the dial off, we see this beautiful 466 movement. Vacheron was the first brand given the Geneva seal, which is a very high quality mark. And one of the tenets of that mark is that uh, you cannot have any wire springs in your watch. And even in this relatively modest uh, movement, we see those beautifully shaped springs. But we also see something else. That is just sad to see. And someone just used a too big screwdriver and sheared the brass around the screw. But let's turn to the worst answer poll. There were a lot of really wrong answers. Most of them perfectly uh, confident in their uh, answer. And uh, some of them also a little bit disturbing, to be honest. So thanks to everyone who participated. And I just want to say two things. Well played and get help. Now back to the watch. There were also some marks around the driving wheel for the second's pinion. So some things have happened to this watch. We also see that when we take out the pallet fork, the train just doesn't run very freely, which would certainly uh, contribute to the low amplitude. And we also see that the driving wheel for the second's pinion is wobbling quite extensively. And that means that uh, the pivot which the wheel is placed on is uh, bent. But wait, you get more. You see the jewel in uh, this cock for the second pinion is uh, loose. It shouldn't be. So this is a bit of a strange movement. And no, we're not done yet. We're going to take off uh, the driving wheel for the second pinion. We use our special tool for that. This wheel is so close to the bridge that it's difficult to get any protection underneath it. And we can see the result of that from previous watchmakers. Hey, enough of that already. This is not a cycle, eh? So to avoid marks like that, we highly polish the ends of these tools. And then uh, they will not make marks like that. So taking off the train bridge, we see that uh, the third wheel with this extended pivot for that uh, driving wheel is also stuck in the hole, which is uh, of course also impacting uh, timekeeping and amplitude. And that's likely then caused by this bent pivot. So Vacheron is often uh, considered uh, the oldest watchmaking brand. There is a little caveat, uh, they are the oldest brand with uninterrupted business. Oh, what is that? It's an old watch. What the, where does that piece go? That piece is the barrel bridge. What's a barrel bridge called? Why it's called the barrel bridge? Yeah. Because it's a bridge over the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> this is the barrel, this one. 
And the bridge is like a piece that goes over it. Oh, oh it says that it's on there in the video. Yeah. It says that you put it down. Yeah. So as I was saying, uh, Varsova Constantine is not the oldest watchmaker, but it is uh, the oldest watchmaker that has been continuously operating. So they started back in uh, 1755, so they're getting relatively close to a 300 year uh, anniversary, and they've continued operating ever since. So while companies like uh, Blancpain, Jacques Hedro, uh, Favre Le Bas, and so forth are actually older they were all uh, out of business for one time or another they are of course part of the holy trinity of watchmaking and looking at a simple detail like this screw on the underside of the barrel bridge this is a black polished screw that no one will ever see black polishing means that uh, the surface is so perfectly polished that all the light is reflected in one direction only. Thus, you basically either see the light or you don't. So if you see the light, then the surface is very shiny. And if you don't, it looks black. So that is black polishing. And I did that with a screw hidden underneath a bridge. So getting the mainspring out of the barrel, we see it does not lie flat on the table. That could also be a cause of uh, the bad amplitude. So we are going to try to find a new mainspring. So coming back to the Holy Trinity. So uh, Trinity is of course uh, three and the other two brands are uh, Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet. So this is actually the second Vacheron I'm doing on the channel. I did uh, one Patek so far. Hope to be do, able to do an AP quite soon as well. Of course, one can uh, argue that maybe those three aren't the pinnacle of uh, watchmaking anymore. They certainly contributed massively to uh, the trade with numerous complications and innovations. Whether or not uh, Breguet, for instance, even uh, Lange and Zöne and so forth should be uh, counted as uh, an endless discussion. But for all uh, intents and purposes, the Holy Trinity is uh, Vachon Constantin, Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet. All right, let's get uh, the movement into the cleaning machine. And then we're going to turn our attention to the case. The case is uh, 18 karat solid gold. John doesn't uh, want to do much to the case and I fully support that. The thing is every time you polish a case you are removing metal and you don't really want to remove a lot of gold from your case. get uh, the case into the ultrasonic and yes the ultrasonic makes a horrible sound so consider yourself warned all right time to do some repairs we see this uh, third wheel is uh, really not running true the wheel itself is uh, somehow bent out of shape and we also need to uh, straighten the pivot. So getting the shape back on this wheel is very difficult. We could uh, heat the wheel up that will allow the metal to be shaped a little bit better but then you also risk uh, deforming the teeth. So I'm trying to uh, just uh, flatten it a little bit by way of the hammer way of the hammer that sounds like a watchmaker's autobiography right there 
would obviously be uh, adapted to the big screen as an action movie. I would kind of like if someone would uh, cast me for that role. Of course, the sequel would probably be uh, Way of the Hammer 2, The Wife's Revenge, Out of Time. Unfortunately, coming to a bedroom close to you. Very soon. So we're gonna have to straighten that pivot also. Sorry the image isn't that great. Maybe I need to get a new phone. So when you see a bent pivot like this, uh, the first inclination uh, might be to just bend it back. Because, you know, if it was bent one way, it might bend the other, right? <coughs> the thing is that uh, when metal is bent it's actually work hardened so that means that uh, the point of bend will actually be more brittle so if you try to bend it back you're gonna break it so we need to first uh, heat the metal so that it becomes more pliable and then we use a pair of tweezers you can use a pair of thick brass tweezers maybe even better than what i'm using here to straighten the pivot and by the way if you want to learn uh, these kinds of techniques a little bit more in depth then uh, joining the channel is a great idea you can click uh, the join button here on youtube then you will see uh, what the different tiers offer you and if you would rather prefer patreon then uh, yes you can join there also you'll join the same uh, discord server the same community and have the same uh, benefits Still not perfect, but at least better. The second repair we need to do is to put uh, the jewel for the second pinion uh, cock back in. These things are pretty small. That is the jewel you can uh, see there at the center of the table. So this tool has uh, two parts, an anvil and a pusher. The pusher has a spring-loaded center that fits into uh, the jewel hole and thus uh, centers uh, the pusher. And it also needs to uh, be the size of the jewel, basically. If it's uh, too small, then it might uh, crack the jewel. And uh, the anvil needs to have a space for the jewel on the other side. Otherwise, you can also crack or uh, yeah, crush the jewel. So we gently screw this down until we have the jewel back in place. And then we have to test it to make sure that uh, the wheel still has enough uh, space under it. All right, well, let's continue with assembling the rest of the movement. See, even on the inside of the barrel, there's a beautiful finishing. So yeah. It is certainly a waste in a lot of ways to uh, spend so much time and thus inevitably also money for the buyer on uh, finishing places where it will never be seen by anyone but the watchmaker. Let me know what you think in the comment section. One common way of looking at it in a positive uh, way is that uh, if a manufacturer spends this much time on uh, finishing the aesthetics then they also, of course, must have spent a lot of time on the overall quality. Because it wouldn't make sense to have a product that isn't really that good and then just finishing it over the top. And there are those who will say that, uh, no, no, the finishing has a very important function because it uh, stops the dust uh, from uh, gathering in the watch. That's largely not true. That's... Uh, a completely different level of finishing we're talking about. If the parts are roughly machined and you have uh, not deburred the parts and so forth, then sure. But that's just not the case with modern watches. All right, let's do some watch porn. This is the level of finishing we're talking about. Even the tips of the escape wheel teeth are black polished. Yeah. Next level, boss level. All right, we're gonna put some of uh, these parts in the escapement into uh, this uh, epilam solution called the Fixodrop. 
that uh, simply helps uh, the lubrication stay in place. By the way, you might notice I have some blue ink on my right thumb there. I had to change uh, the printer ink and had a little bit of an accident. My hands are clean, as clean as they uh, were possible to get. But that ink just has to be worn off, I think. So in a watch, it's very, very important that we minimize the friction as much as possible. Because there's very little power in the watch, it's just the mainspring. So we put a tiny little bead of oil in the center of this uh, capstone. And then we can screw it back on. And yeah, these are tiny screws. In more modern watches, the capstone would typically be held in place by a little spring. So you wouldn't have to uh, take off the balance wheel and so forth. But uh, that's the way it was done in this one. The stud holder in this uh, balance cock is also a little bit unusual. Well, unusual for most watches, not for uh, Holy Trinity level. So we have to slide uh, the stud into this little uh, slot and then we can screw it down afterwards. Since this is a Breguet overcoil hair spring, we also need to make sure that uh, the spring is uh, between those two index pins. With the balance in place, we need to go to the other side of the movement and then also lubricate the capstone on that side. Careful. Ooh. All right. Tiny screws and tiny screwdrivers. That looks beautiful. All right, with the balance oscillating nicely, we can then continue with uh, assembling the rest of the movement. As you might remember, the winding works, so the ratchet wheel, the crown wheel, are all on the underside of this uh, barrel bridge. It's very important we lubricate any place there might be friction, as that of course will uh, prevent wear which will then also increase the longevity of the parts and of the watch itself. All right, let's get the train back together. And I am forgetting something uh, just about here. Let me know in the comments what I'm forgetting. Whenever we have a wheel with an extended pivot, like the third wheel here, it's of course important we get that wheel through the jewel, through the bridge first. It is a surefire way of breaking pivots if we don't uh, check that the wheels are uh, nicely uh, freely rotating before we screw it down, the bridge that is. And if you still haven't seen what I forgot, maybe it's clearer now. I did put it back in later, I just didn't show that I took everything out again and I put it back. The escape wheel is uh, also quite easy to break pivots on. I use uh, a microscope to make sure that I see the pivot clearly before uh, screwing anything down. If you uh, check frequently that uh, the train is running freely, then that should also suffice. And with the train all in place, uh, we're going to put together the keyless works so that we can uh, wind the watch and see uh, the train rotate. So for some of these parts, there is uh, not as much uh, rotational friction as there is uh, pressure friction. So for those parts, I use a different kind of grease. So this is obviously not a complicated movement in any way. But uh, Vachon Constantin has a long history of uh, grand complications, grand complications. Grand complications are watches that incorporate a lot of different, uh, well, complications. 
a watch complication is anything besides timekeeping. So, uh, like date is probably the most common complication, but you have the things like uh, triple date, triple calendar, moon phase, chronograph. And actually in 1770, Vacherot introduced uh, a watch with chronograph, with the moon phase and triple calendar. So yeah, long history in doing these things, and that's of course why they're a part of the Holy Trinity. And as we assemble the rest of this uh, simple movement, we can just enjoy this wonderful uh, finishing of the parts here. You can see the bevels on the parts. So uh, instead of having sharp edges, uh, the edges are uh, sloped. So that is someone sitting with a small file on the loop and just uh, by hand creating those bevels and polishing them. If you uh, saw me turn the train there, it does not run as uh, smoothly as it should. So that's a little bit of a cause for concern. Very often after simply cleaning uh, the watch, the train will run very freely. And when we give just a little bit of wind on uh, the watch, the pallet fork will uh, flip from side to side. We see that's not really happening here. So what I did was to uh, disassemble the train again, check all the different uh, jewel uh, depth things, make sure that uh, everything was running entirely freely. And uh, with that extra work, which did take a couple of hours, then uh, we are finally able to see that uh, the pallet fork uh, flips nicely. So then we can put uh, the balance back in and uh, hopefully the watch will run as it should. Last thing we're going to do before putting uh, the watch on the time grapher is to uh, lubricate all the different uh, bearings. So these uh, red uh, jewels we see are uh, synthetic rubies. In general, you have uh, one ruby for the top pivot of the wheel and one for the bottom pivot. So one on each side of the movement, if you will. And we have to lubricate both, of course. That helps uh, the wheel rotate with very little friction and thus uh, not steal so much power from the mainspring. So just for the sake of not keeping this uh, video too long, I didn't show all that work, but uh, we can see the result on the time grapher. So that looks good. I did clean the dial a little bit as well. There's not uh, too much we can do with the dial itself, but uh, the indices and also the hands. And then we can press the hands back on. I notice here that uh, the minute hand is a little bit too close to the dial. That's uh, the reason why I lift uh, the movement up a little bit like that. And then I use a different type of tool to just make the minute hand go a little bit higher around the dial. Last thing then is this beautifully blued second sand. That is a really beautiful combination. Very simple. Yet, uh, very elegant. All right, let's then uh, get uh, the movement back into the spacer ring. And thereafter into the case itself. And this old case has this really nice uh, teardrop lugs. A lot of gold in uh, those chunky lugs. It was also quite common for these old watches to have this uh, dust cover inside the case. Gold is of course a very soft metal, so uh, it is uh, more prone to uh, being uh, deformed, which impacts the overall uh, dust proofness. This, of course, was never a waterproof watch. 
Not that any watch is really waterproof, but that's a separate discussion. Before seeing the watch on the wrist, I'd just like to remind everyone that at uh, vintagewatchservices.eu you'll always find more than 100 beautiful watches. And as a subscriber, you can use uh, this coupon code for 10% off. And there we have it. Beautiful 1940s dress watch. Now also running as a Vacheron Constantin should. As you can see, John also has the original strap or an original strap and uh, the original buckle. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, click on like and subscribe will uh, help and you will get notified when I upload new videos. We'll be back with another video shortly. Until then, ta-ta. <laughs>